Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about the Jinja2 templating engine. Um, so, we're going to be exploring what template engines do, how to load the templates, template variables, template control, control structures, and template inheritance. So, uh, first of all, what do template engines do? Um, well, there's a lot of ways of thinking about them, but I kind of like to always explain them like a supercharged version of Mad Libs. Okay, so here's a very short and simple example. Um, so we have these curly braces. You may have seen these, so it's double curly braces. So it's name had a little name. Or it's going to say just blank had a little blank. Um, that makes sense? The Yes, hopefully. <laughs> okay, so the next slide hopefully will clear things up if, you're, if you don't get it. So if name equals Mary and animal equals lamb, then our little... Um, little uh, Example here would be Mary had a little lamb. Um, so Python does have a really great built-in string formatter. Um, and I already covered that in um, a previous video, and I, I totally love it, but occasionally you need a little bit more power. Um, or, um, you know, more power or also, if you're, if you're doing like a lot of text, this, the formatting um, is probably not the best way to go. So, um, yeah, so if you have like large amounts of text, Jinja2 is going to be probably the, the best thing that meets your needs. Um, so Jinja2 is a modern and designer-friendly templating engine for Python, modeled after Django's templates. That's from the docs. Um, most templating engines, most, most templating, most template engines are usually used in web apps, but that's not necessary but we're going to show you here so here's uh, an html example i've got this curly braces so i've got a title a header and a body um but as i was going to say before i jumped all over myself um <laughs> they're not exclusively used for web templates it can be used for any kind of text um it just happens to be that you know one of the most common things especially in python that we do is generating text that happens to be an html document so how do you load these templates? Um, if you're using Jinja2 within a web framework, you're gonna be, I'm gonna say, just use whatever they recommend. Like if you're using Flask or, I don't know, there's a bajillion of them. I can only think of Flask right now, but there's dozens of them. Um, use whatever method they tell you to. Um, right now, um, yeah, as stated earlier, using Jinja2, um, it's not exclusive to web frameworks. So um, we're gonna be pretending like we are just generating text. We're not, um, tied to a web framework. So that way we can kind of lower the amount of complexity. So what we're going to be doing is just having Python scripts that generate strings. Some of those strings are going to be big, some of them are going to be short, but just strings. So um, yes, in this video, we will not be using web framework. Um, this is to reduce the complexity of the code. I should have read my slides one more time. I'm, I jumped all over myself. I'm so sorry. Um, there are several ways to load templates. We'll be using the file system loader in this video. All the code in this example will have this import statement implied. View it. It's wonderful. <laughs> okay, so um, we're going to pass a directory containing the templates to the file system loader. Right here. So we're, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a um, where my code lives. I'm going to have a directory in there called templates. And that's where my templates are going to be. And we're going to give the file system loader that name of that template. It's like if you wanted to call it, um, I don't know, plates, you would just say give it plates. I... Of course, it just name it templates. It's going to be a lot easier. Um, then we load the environment. So what we're going to do is we have this environment, and then we're going to give it the um, oops the loader we created earlier. So then now the Jinja2 environment's ready. Uh, we make our first template inside of that template directory, and we're going to call it hello world.txt because legally every single tutorial has to start with hello world, and I don't want to be on the wrong side of the law. Um, so in that hello world, we put hello world. That's that, that's it. <laughs> okay, so now we want to load that template. So remember we created that environment. That environment has a function in it called get template, and then you give it a file name, and then it's going to get that template. Look, see, I'm going to put it right here. Mm -hmm. And then we can render it. So that template, so here we go. We got the we got the template and then we put it into a template object and then that template object we called render to output and then we're going to print out that output and what do you think is going to happen guess oh it's hello world there we go 
Okay, so, so this is pretty uninteresting, um, but it is the absolute simplest possible example, and that's really why I wanted to show you. I, when I was first learning Jinja 2, I was very frustrated with like, oh, what now I view as unneeded complexity. Like if someone had shown me that, it, it's much more clear that way. So let's move into something more complicated. Um, what if we add a variable to this? Template variables. Okay, so um, we create a new template called lamb.txt. What we're gonna do is have, just remember those Mad Libs we did before, the curly braces, and yeah, that's just a placeholder, right? So we've got here, curly braces, name, and it's had a little lamb. Can you guess what's gonna happen? I bet you can. So um, the curly braces and the name, that is a template variable. Uh, so now we can load the template, just like we do with the Hello World. So we have the environment, we're gonna call get template and then give it a file name and then it's gonna assign that to that template. And now we want to render it. This is where it gets interesting. So we call that render function and then we give name equals Mary. So that was a variable that we'd put into that template and between those curly braces was name. Everything that we say here in this render, when we say name, that's, who knows? That's gonna equal Mary. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you saw that. I, I almost broke everything. <laughs> um, so now we're gonna print that out. What happens when we print it out? Um, it says Mary had a little lamb. Why does it say that? Well, because we gave Mary to the variable name and that variable name whoop, is right here in the curly break. So whatever you pass as that variable is gonna be put into the template. So yeah, Mary had a little lamb. And now if we want to change the name, you know, I've always wanted to have a farm and I've always wanted to have a sheep. No, sheep and lamb, I think so. I don't know enough to be a farmer, but here we go. So we're going to use my name, Jason, and we're going to print that out. So what does that print out to be? Jason had a little lamb, if only. Um, okay, um, now what if we add another variable? So now we have our curly braces name, had a little curly braces animal. So this, this template is going to take two variables, name, an animal and whatever the value of name is, it's going to be put where that name spot is, whatever the value of animal is, it's going to be put that little animal spot is. So we're going to pass multiple variables. So when we do that render, we're going to give name, the value of Bob and animal, the value of cat. We're going to print that out. And what do you think is going to happen? Well, Bob had a little cat. So sweet. You know, they say cats are really big on the internet. So hopefully this will give me more hits. Uh, so we can also uh, access more complex objects. So here, look at this. So we've got a um, curly braces data dot name, and then curly braces data dot animal. Okay, that's we're getting to a little more complex object. So what we're going to do is we're going to pass that um, template. We're going to give it a dictionary. So this dictionary is going to have a person gonna have a name, Frank, and an animal dog. And now when we render that template, the data variable is going to be assigned the value of person. So we're giving this data here, this dictionary up here. Now we're gonna print that out. And what does it say? Frank had a little dog. I'm sure he's very happy. Little dogs are very cute. Okay, so template control structures. So uh, control structures control the flow of the program. Uh, We'll cover conditionals and for loops. There's a few more, but if we're just kind of covering the basics just to get you running and playing. The most important thing is after you watch this video, just start playing, just start trying it out. And then you probably have questions about, well, how do you do this? How do you do that? Then Google is your friend. Um, conditionals. So um, we created a template called truth.txt. Now we've got something a little bit different. Instead of having those double curly bra braces, we've got a curly brace, a percentage, and then percentage and curly brace, that kind of closes the statement. So if truth, then we'll do this statement. This is true. More the curly brace percentage signs. So they kind of, you see how they kind of balance each other. There's one on this side and one on that side. So that this isn't going to be printed at all. Anything between these curly braces and these percentage signs is not going to be uh, printed. It's kind of giving the logic of it. So. If you look, so if we're gonna have a variable named truth, and if that variable named truth is true, it will print this out. If it's not, 
then it'll print this out. And then we do end if to end this if loop. Well, not if loop, this if structure. Um, and then we're going to render, render it with a variable, just like we've done before with those other um, examples here. So we make, we, uh, we get our template, we render it, we give truth the value of true, and we print it out. And it's going to say this is true. Now, what if we change to false? False, it's going to say this, this is false. Let's go back just so you can get one more look at it. So hopefully this, this makes sense here. It's, it's pretty straightforward. All right, now we're going to go to for loops. For loops are going to be pretty, pretty snazzy. So we're going to create a template called rainbow.txt. And what we're going to do is, once again, these are kind of like, like kind of logic statements here with these percent curly bracket, or curly bracket percent, then a statement, and then, yeah, okay, whatever. You get, you get the idea, I'm sure. Hope, hopefully, hopefully you do get the idea, right? Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is have for each color and colors, we're going to print color. Ooh, I broke it again. My goodness, I'm being reckless. Okay. Um, hopefully this this makes sense. It's pretty self-explanatory. So what we're going to do is we're going to get that template. Rainbow.txt. We're going to give it colors. These are not all the colors of the rainbow. I tried, but it, it was too long, just too big. I had to make the fonts too tiny. So in our world right now, a rainbow only has red, green, and blue. It's a sad world. Okay, so we're going to give um, that template the colors, the list of colors here, and we're going to output that. And green, red, green, blue. Why is that? Well, look, we said for every color and color, print color. So it, it, it did that. Uh, template inheritance. Okay, this this is where thing, yeah, things are really fun here. So um, template, template inheritance allows you to create building blocks that you can combine. Um, in this section, we will be using HTML as an example, just because it's so, it's such a reasonable choice as an example. Um, so we're going to make a template called header, and that header is going to have those curly braces, and it's going to have a variable, a template variable called title. And here we have um, another template called base.html, and now we're going to do a cool thing. We can include some templates into other templates. So we just made this one called head header. HTML, and we can include that. Once again, with the special ones where it's a curly brace and percentage, we can say include, and then the name of the file we'd like to include. Um, and now we render it. So we're going to say the title is page title. Very, very creative. I'm always so creative. And then we're going to print that out, and it's going to do exactly like we thought. But if you notice, we didn't call in that render, we called base HTML. And then base HTML inherits header.html. So you can see how you can start building these. You could have one, you know, called um, footer.html or css.html. CSS, yeah. Uh, okay, so, um, and now we will enable some child templates um, for base, H base HTML. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is where things get weird a little bit. But once you once you once you do this a few times, it makes sense. So within the base HTML, we're gonna say that there's this content section here. Okay, see this? This this oh this this line here. Block, end block, and then we've got content. So now we make a template called child.html, and this child.html is going to extend base HTML. Okay, so we say, ooh, we say it extends base HTML. And now, remember how earlier we had um, that block content? Now we're actually going to define that block content. So here we go block, end block, content. And now we have the body variable inside of a, a parentheses. Parentheses? Paragraphs. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, and now we can render this new template. So we're going to call or get that um, template, the child.html. We're going to give it a title, a page title, and a body of stuff. And we're going to print that out. And look, look, it works. It works. So you can see how you can, they're like um, building blocks. And you can put one inside the other, and then one's a child, the other one. It, it can get very complex. And um, yeah, it's, it's very, very cool. It also helps really separate things. 
You can imagine if you were actually building a web page, how nice it would be to, to have to only deal with the stuff that's in the body. Everything else is not your problem, right? You've already taken care of all that. Like on a lot of websites, everything, well, pretty much everything in this head here, it's all going to be the same on every page of that site. So you just always have that be inherited. Conclusion. So in this video, we learned uh, what template, template engines do, how to load templates, uh, template variables, some control structures, and template inheritance. Um, now that you cover the basics, start coding. Um, some of the stuff I showed you might seem a little strange. Just start messing around with it. Once you start messing around with it, it starts making sense. Um, Jinja 2 has many, many more features. It is really cool. Um, there's a lot for you to explore. So just kind of poke around, do some experimenting, get comfortable with it, and then just go wild. Good luck. Um, thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit that like button down below. And if you want to see more videos about programming and open source um, stuff, software, um, hit that subscribe button. Thank you so much for watching.